Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest freestanding mountain in the world, and the absolute summit of Africa, 19,341 feet, 5,895 meters. This would be something unlike anything I've ever done. Let's dance. After arriving in Moshi, Tanzania, my friend Tony and I boarded a rather crowded bus and headed to the beginning of the Machame Trail. It was the 23rd of August, 2017. The first day of hiking was pretty challenging. We hiked for around four hours through rather steep, muddy, but beautifully green rainforest terrain. <laughs> it's now officially just me. Tony has gone above, ahead, and the rest of the crew is behind. Man, this is kind of kicking my ass. Not gonna lie, but it is quite fun. The first campsite was Machame Hut. Dinner came pretty late, so I occupied myself with some astrophotography. It was pretty beautiful, and the stars, as bright as I have ever seen, were certainly putting on a show. Day two's hike was very different from the first days. A lot more fun and not nearly as straining. It was a lot of uphill and climbing over rocks and through little valleys and over massive boulders. I was pleased and certainly humbled by the many beautiful views experienced along the trek. We made it to our campsite just before 2 p.m. Shira Cave Camp. It's located in a nice clearing at the top of the ridge. The sun was shining bright over the jagged peaks of the mountains in the distance. After a bit of a nap, the guides took us all on an acclimatization hike to the top of one of the ridges, which provided us a beautiful view of both the camping area as well as the looming summit. Day three was all about hiking through the moorlands of Kilimanjaro, a pretty dry, rocky area that kind of reminds me of Mordor from The Lord of the Rings. Unfortunately, I forgot the One Ring back at the hotel. We stopped for lunch at Lava Tower, which sits at 5,091 feet or 4,600 meters. It was here where I first felt the effects of altitude. Made it to, uh, as you can see, Lava Tower. I got a headache and, uh, it's no fun, but it's not, it's not too terrible. Look at that. There's no scale, but boop. <laughs> but they, basically this is just where people come and have lunch. This is our lunch spot. And then we are going to another campsite for dinner and sleeping. So this is just for acclimatization. And then we're going to be going to uh, a different place. It's lower. And here we have our dinner or lunch. That's the word. <laughs> From Lava Tower, we headed down an elevation towards Barango Camp. This is right after the Lava Tower. Gotta go down, then we gotta go up. We arrived at the camp, elevation 3,900 meters, 12,798 feet. Barango Camp was probably the most stunning campsite of the whole trek. Set in a beautiful gorge-like area with massive rock walls surrounding almost every side. The next morning, we woke up and climbed directly up one of the rock faces, zigzagging and ascending approximately 1,000 meters directly skyward. It is said to be the most fun part of the entire adventure. The ascent was as enjoyable as I heard it would be. Full tourist. At the apex of the Bronco Wall climb, so we're going. we arrived at a nice shelf with an absolutely breathtaking view of the massive summit. We hiked down a pretty huge gorge called Karanga Valley and then had to ascend the other side. While we were ascending the last bit of Karanga Valley, our assistant guide Evan told us that the valley is the last place where we can get water. So the porters have to go down all that way to get water and then come back. And then they have to trek the water all the way to Barafu. That's pretty nuts if you ask me. Porters have a hard life. After a very long climb, we finally made it to Barafu Camp, the official base camp of Kilimanjaro, which sits at 15,091 feet or 4,600 meters. Basically dying, but I'm still here. Massive ass headache. <laughs> um, I felt better, head is definitely pounding. I'll tell you one thing, I'm not looking forward to that tomorrow. It was pretty miserable for about 45 minutes, but eventually I did get used to it. I went to bed feeling confident as ever. 
At 3.07 a.m., I woke to the voice of one of the guides. It was time. After we got dressed, we all gathered in a group, and our assistant guide, Juma, had us all put our hands in the middle. The chant was, I guess that's who we are. Hadn't heard it until then. Good to know we had a team name. Then we began our ascent. The ascent was long. For the first two hours, we were in complete darkness. We were all in great spirits and we got to watch the sunrise over one of the smaller peaks called Moenzi Peak. It was lovely. Can't really see much, not yet. I actually felt pretty great for a solid portion of this climb, but maybe about halfway through the summit push, I ended up lagging behind and it started getting worse by the minute. The altitude was starting to get to me. I just started feeling exhausted more quickly. I didn't have a headache and I didn't really feel sick. I just kept getting exhausted very easily. I had to move very slowly, but I kept chugging along. After quite a while, I finally made it to Stella Point. Just about Stella Point. be a pretty lovely sight for someone weary like myself, looking for some sort of landmark or checkpoint to finally achieve. But Stella Point is not the true summit. One still has about an hour's worth of ascent remaining to arrive at Uhuru Peak, the true peak of Kilimanjaro. This last bit was definitely a long ass shitty climb. It wasn't treacherous, it wasn't very steep or anything along those lines, it was pretty straightforward, but the altitude sucked. Eventually I made it. I definitely made it. It felt pretty good to finally be there, but I'll be honest, I was a bit loopy. The altitude was no joke. Feels pretty good. However, I definitely don't feel good, if that makes any sense. Obviously, the accomplishment is wonderful, but I feel pretty miserable right now. I'm not gonna lie. 19,341 feet. Yeah, that'll take a toll on anybody. So, I feel pretty, pretty gross. My head hurts pretty nicely. And uh, I feel like I could throw up any moment, but hey, I made it here. I was slower than some others, but hey, I made it. And that's what really matters. I'm really happy, so that's about it. <laughs> All of this was not for nothing. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. So, yes, I finally made it to the summit of Kilimanjaro. It definitely provided a significant sense of accomplishment. I took up with me a couple of small glass jars. I filled them to the top with some dirt from under the sign. Bariki, our main guide, was also with me at the summit, and he found an empty Kilimanjaro beer bottle, and we took pictures with it at the sign. We spent about an hour completely alone at the summit messing around. Eventually, the rest of the group came and joined us. But this adventure was far from over. The Descent. Ah, The Descent. Nobody ever talks about The Descent. Everyone writes articles and makes videos showing how amazing and inspirational the drive to the summit is. Everything stops there. That's the understandable conclusion. It's what everybody generally wants to hear about. Well, I won't go too in depth, but let me just say The Descent was miserable. Hours and hours of sliding down steep, rocky, and dusty paths. What few video clips I got with my phone do not do it justice. It was steep and it was a lot of sliding. Around 3.30 p.m., just over 12 hours after he had left for the summit, we finally made it back to Barafu campsite. We spent a few hours resting, then we descended from Barafu down for about two more hours. We arrived at the final, very forested campsite where it was starting to get dark. After a quick dinner, we knocked out for the night. The next and final morning was pretty lazy. We took our time getting up and packing everything up. All of the porters would be staying here for a while, so we said our goodbyes. Then the porters and guides got together and sang the famed song of Kilimanjaro. When 
we eventually arrived at the final stop, we were greeted with a place to buy soda or beer, some snacks, or get our boots cleaned. It was a nice conclusion to a very wonderful trip. Despite some of the complaints, I'd highly recommend anyone who gets the chance tackle this climb. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life, and even though at the time I might not have enjoyed absolutely everything, I came away with memories I'll never forget.